media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Rick Ackerman, editor of the newsletter Rick's Picks, his website RickAckerman.com. Welcome back to the show, Rick. Hey, Jim. Good to get with you again. Thanks for inviting me on. What kind of action do you see in the markets heading into the election? Well, I see a Trump landslide, and I think his victory will be uh, substantial enough that even though there's going to be a great deal of legal wrangling and, and contested ballots and maybe a lengthy delay before we have an official winner, I think it will be generally appreciated, especially on Wall Street, that Trump, in any case, is going to win by such a significant margin that the market's going to uh, get renewed energy and we're going to have a big post-election rally. If he doesn't win, what happens? I think that's the end of the republic as we know it. It's going to trigger definitely a secessionist movement, uh, red state versus blue, and I think the deep crimson states like Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, they're going to be the first to uh, to secede or at least try to secede. We we know what that came to uh, 160 years ago. Um, but uh, I think we're probably in for a civil war no matter who wins, because uh, if Biden wins, it's going to uh, come with uh, punitive measures. They're already talking about some sort of, uh, it, it would be akin to the, the uh, well, it would just be trials people they 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 want to straighten out people starting with uh, those who worked in the Trump administration because uh, they're obviously in the eyes of the the liberal left uh axis they are there there's something wrong with those people so i think we're really going to have a full tilt civil war and uh, if trump wins it's certainly going to uh, stir things up on the left and uh, all I can say is that uh, they better be careful because the rights, the conservatives, the red states are holding all the guns and the ammo. So if you're playing the stock market, are there strategies that uh, you can deal with either a Trump victory or a loss? Yeah, I think the straddles are very much underpriced. Um meaning you can buy puts and calls, so if the market makes an extreme move in either direction, uh, you collect, you win. Uh, one thing I'm doing in particular with subscribers, Apple's sitting down around 116 right now. It did trade up to as high as 138 in the flurry of excitement uh, post-split, but uh, I've got a butterfly spread that's locked on the 150 strike, meaning if the stock rallies between uh, from 116 now up to 150 between now and November 20th, the spread that you can buy as cheaply as 25 bucks a piece right now, it's a four option position, could go to $10 or uh, that, that equates to $1,000 $1, in your account. So uh, you get enormous leverage there. And I think the butterfly bets are are particularly good for this situation where you can just sort of take an outrageous rally target for any stock or index and turn it into a butterfly. So uh, I do feel that regardless of which candidate wins, we're going to have some uh, a big move post-election, or maybe it would begin just immediately before the election. And I do think bets on that scenario are underpriced right now. Mm-hmm. Are people putting bets, so to speak, on vaccine makers right now? Well, we hear so much conflicting information every day. Um, you know, some very disappointing reports, and and uh, there's still 
this idea that uh, many, many Americans, if not most, uh, and that extends outside of the USA, uh, are going to be skeptical when that vaccine comes out. The the Democrats seem to think they have a solution that uh, they pick some sort of panel that says this vaccine's all right and it'll somehow be more trusted than anything that the Republicans could uh, could represent as safe. But I, I think no matter what, there's going to be a lot of skepticism about any initial vaccine that's released in quantities of millions. And uh, I don't think I'm alone in saying, well, I'll wait for 60, 70, 80 million others to get their vaccines before I get mine. And then, of course, there's the the political idea that uh, we're going to be segregated in the people who wear yellow armbands if we haven't, uh, if we don't have proof that we've been vaccinated. So, uh, so the vaccine is a big mess from, from a medical standpoint. I'm not that optimistic. I, I think, uh, the, the COVID is supposedly in the cold virus uh, family and, um, you know, they haven't really made much uh, any strides against the cold virus uh, since um, well since since I was a kid uh, 60 60 odd years ago so um, so I'm not I'm not in the optimist camp as regards a virus well or a vaccination right when it comes to colds the British cold Institute shut down because they couldn't find a cure the only things they found that worked against cold were uh, zinc vitamin C lozenges because that kills viruses in your throat and uh, Kleenex that had an antiseptic in them so that after you discarded a Kleenex, it didn't spread any germs. But they used uh -huh. Mercurochrome, and the big result was everybody had a red nose from using Mercurochrome. If you remember right. that, that used to be the disinfectant you used when you were a kid. So uh, well, nobody I'm wanted a red nose, so the idea of using red Kleenex was tossed. I'm definitely in the zinc camp. You know, I, I've used it over the course of my life, and I can tell you it simply works. Just uh, the claims that uh, that it will shorten the duration of cold and the severity. Uh, let me also mention, I, I, you can, the, the strangest thing going on really is that we're getting these these uh, cyclical stories about, hey, the virus is really starting to uh, heat up in 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 Germany or in Israel or wherever. And we're not reading about corresponding, uh, uh, you know, hospitals getting crowded and people dying. So it's, it's sort of strange, really. Um, and uh, someone uh, in my chat room asked the question, well, do, do you know anybody who's, who has the virus? And do you know anybody who's died of it? So it seems to be something we only read about, that people are dying like crazy and uh, or, or getting the vaccine like crazy. And um, I'm just sort of curious where the story goes after that. They're certainly not going on ventilators. We, we're, we've been there and done that. But uh, the, the whole virus story is so is so muddled. And, you know, I just uh, I, I think that Trump's got it right there. You know, we, we just sort of uh, we're adults. We know we can take whatever safety measures we think are appropriate. Um, the restaurant owners who are allowed to open I think are a little bit too zealous uh, about it. They're a little bit greedy, but that's understandable. Um, you know, when they've been shut down, I went to a restaurant the other night and it was a little more crowded than I would have preferred, especially when a table of nine garrulous women, it looked like some sort of soccer team sat down at a table near us. So, um, you know, in, in those situations, we shouldn't kid ourselves that the mask is really going to do any good. It's all kind of stupid. But, uh, but, you know, looking at the bigger picture, um, I think we're just going to have to open things up and, and let people sort, sort out the risks on, on an individual basis. Well, uh, we've had, uh, family members in Britain die from it and get sick. But I also hear already when you say there's different kinds of, well, it's a coronavirus. And there are, there's the Asian strain already and the European strain, and they can tell what kind you're infected with because they test its DNA. Right, it's, uh, and, and I guess, you know, the reason we don't have a cold vaccine is uh, because 
a vaccine for the common cold is that there are just too many variants. It mutates, and I don't think we've got a really good handle on that yet, really, uh, as to how many how many variants of COVID we're getting. Uh, but certainly the more of them there are, the less effective any vaccine is going to be. Yeah, the problem so, they said with the cold is that it's usually not one virus. Is uh, You get one virus, you fight it off, you get another one, another one. And usually by the time it makes you ill, you have five to seven cold viruses working on you at the same time. That's why every cold is different. Is, uh, yeah. So that makes it very hard to develop a vaccine if uh, well, they gang up on you. Well, one thing I can report, one of my oldest friends is also my personal physician in New Jersey. And uh, he's pretty well known uh, in his uh, region. He does a radio show every week and and when we go around uh, town we're having breakfast or uh, whatever it seems like everybody in in southern new jersey has been his patient at one point or another and um, he has treated several dozen uh covid positive patients and uh last time i talked with them only one of them had had uh, serious symptoms he really got sick um, but he was the only one who waited uh, in his case, 10 days before he really got a treatment regimen started. But my friend uses the, uh, you know, the combination of, uh, of Zithromax and hydrochlor- hydroxychloroquine and, uh, zinc. And he just says that it works, period. So, uh, it, we've definitely advanced in the treatment of COVID. And, and when you factor out all p- the people who have been said to have died from COVID but who didn't and everything else, the number of people who are dying these days seems uh, it's it's a pretty small number. We'll have more with Rick Ackerman right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Rick Ackerman. Rick, what's your outlook on the U.S. dollar? Well, I've been a bull since the 19, early 80s, and uh, I have to say it's uh, it's certainly been giving me challenges to stay bullish. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a deflationist, and what that means is that a strong dollar is eventually going to come home to roost uh, to the extent that so many people on this planet uh, owe money that's denominated in dollars. I think that's going to put a short squeeze on the dollar, leading to a deflationary collapse of the of the financial system. However, you know it's it, it's hard to square that up with the stimulus talk with uh, Trump for one saying, well, the only reason he's not really jumping into it is because he's going to wait till after the election and and ask for stimulus much bigger even than what uh, Pelosi is asking for. So I've characterized these trillions of dollars that are going to be advanced as stimulus as a drop in the bucket compared to the deflationary juggernaut represented by, well, for one, a quadrillion and a half dollar derivatives market uh, that all represents, uh, that's a really thinly collateralized debt that's all in dollars. So, uh, so I'm still a deflationist, and that implies that I'm st- a strong dollar guy. But I have to say, it's it's swimming uh, directly uphill right now. It's uh, it's just having a really rough time. Uh, in fact, today the dollar is getting hammered, and it's about to. It already did break below the the threshold. It, it, it gutted a bullish pattern that's been in play for a month since September 20th. So instead of going to 95, the dollar index today has collapsed to uh, 93. 
and that's that's pretty significant. That's a big piece of change, really, for what amounts to the biggest market on on Earth. Is the dollar going down because there continues to be talk of negative interest rates in North America? No, I, I think it's more a function of uh, of just all the stimulus talk. And uh, the negative rates are, are neat. I think they're a push, really. Everybody's got them. And uh, as far as what it does to uh, dollar velocity, the propensity of people to either save money or get rid of it because uh, they can't, they can't let it sit anywhere. It's not, it's just not going to draw any interest. But no, I think it's, it's very hard to draw a tie between, um, negative interest rates and, and a uh, soft dollar. If negative interest rates were the solution for a slow economy, then Japan and Europe should be booming because they've had negative rates for quite some time. Yeah, that's that's true. And, and you, you need to consider, really, that they had something going for them, Japan, that, that we won't, and that is a global market to export into. You know, Japan's deflation is not going to be, uh, we're not going to experience the same thing. Because Japan would have deflated worse than it did if it didn't have essentially a strong global economy to pull it through. But when the actual engine, the USA economy, is deflating, that's a whole that's a whole new kettle of fish, really. Um, so uh, anyway, I, the, the lessons there that negative interest rates aren't really going to stimulate growth. And uh, as a matter of, uh, of uh, arithmetical fact, uh, it takes an enormous number of stimulus dollars right now to create a dollar's worth of real GDP growth. That's a point that I've made before, but I think it becomes increasingly relevant as uh, as the, the ratio changes. You might need, who knows, 160, 180, 200 dollars. It could be even more to create a dollar's worth of real GDP growth in the U.S. economy. We'll have more with Rick Ackerman right after this. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Rick Ackerman. Rick, is the way to get economies uh, going again is to start working on some of the infrastructure. We have bridges in Canada and the U.S. that are falling apart. Is it time to go to work on them? I can't believe that that idea has not been tried. You know, I, I tried to push it in an interview we did a couple months ago, two or three months ago, and the idea was that we should create a something like the uh, the, the Conservation Corps of the 1930s. It would be a perfect way to put 20 million people to work, and uh, we'd get a much better buy on it than if every all of the infrastructure rebuilding was done by uh, union labor, and I think a lot of unions would be grateful for something that just creates jobs in a big way uh, that that will benefit everybody. So, uh, so I, I think it's a perfect time to do all that infrastructure work. But I have to say, I it, it's a, it's a fabulous idea, and uh, it, it came to me by way of my very most left leaning friend. He describes himself as an anarchist. And he's from the theater world. All his friends are actors and directors and writers, so they are uh, really to the left of, uh, of Bakunin or, or Karl Marx. And yet he presented it to me. He said, "Look, it's such a you know it's a good idea." And he didn't care whether the Democrats or Republicans got it first. That whoever took it and ran with it would win the election. And I tend to agree, although it's too late right now. 
but I never got any further with it than talking to some uh, precinct leader in North Carolina. Uh, you know, how do I move this up to at least the level of Jared Kushner? And it went nowhere. So uh, it, it's a great idea, and I'm absolutely stunned that nobody picked up on it because you, you couldn't. The, the, the army would be the mobilizer. The army would build uh, work camps, and they're capable of training people from doing everything, uh, from digging latrines to doing the engineering calculations for a bridge. So the army has the uh, manpower to build the ca camps where the workers would live and be trained. And uh, we could just turn them loose on uh, what we know to be a crumbling infrastructure, the, the roads, the bridges, and everything else. What do you think is going to happen with gold going into the election and coming out of it? I can't, I can't predict it. You know, I, I see gold as being in an extended holding pattern, but there's so much uncertainty out there that the sellers really can't get much momentum. You know, occasionally there'll be a confluence of uh, headlines that will be negative on gold or bullish on the dollar, and the bad guys will just slam gold and silver down. But other than those days, you know, gold is, uh, the, the drift has been uh, gently higher, or I guess I should say violently higher. Uh, but when you smooth out the graph, uh, you can see that gold is in a bull market. So uh, I expect that to continue. But the bad news is that if gold really takes off, it's it's going to be for reasons that none of us none of us are going to like. You know, it's a question to be be careful what you wish for because if gold is is somehow bound for twenty five hundred and beyond, that will imply that something something terrible has happened. It's not going to be. In, in the stratosphere for for just uh, for, for good news reasons. For all the people who have fled the big cities and sought uh, homes in the countryside, are they going to be the grateful ones if something bad happens after the election? Um, the cities are dead ducks. I, I mean, the trend of deserting the cities is it's going to become a, a tidal flood if it isn't already. And it's because the tax base of all the cities, New York being the prime example, tax base is collapsing. They're going to pile more taxes on a shrinking base, and they're not going to be able to reap the huge tax bonanzas that they had when the rich were all uh, living in these uh, pencil skyscrapers in New York. So uh, that means services will deteriorate. And a lot of cities, you factor in a little more deterioration of services, and these places are going to look like uh, Dresden after World War II. Rick, thank you so much for chatting with us. Well, it's always a pleasure, Jim. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to get with your uh, huge audience. And uh, anyway, I, I enjoy always enjoy answering some of these great questions that you have. My guest has been Rick Ackerman, editor of the newsletter Rick's Picks, his website rickackerman.com. If you have any questions for Rick, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at How Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.